This is TOS Television, your digital first for an African news network. I'm Adesu Alsugi, and this is Africa Now. We begin with recent developments in Chad following the death of President Idris Deby. Chad's new ruling transitional military government has said it will not negotiate with the rebels blamed for killing the country's president, Idris Deby, and who launched an offensive in the country two weeks ago. In a televised statement, the military spokesman, General Azim Bamendoa Aguma said the rebels known by their French acronym FACT were seeking to collaborate with several groups of jihadists and traffickers who served as mercenaries in Libya. He added that this is not the time for mediation or negotiation with outlaws. Still on charge, civil society groups are plotting a public demonstration demanding the dissolution of the transitional military council headed by the new leader, General Mahamat Idris Debi, son of late President Idris Debi. The groups are calling on the Chadian population all over the country to take to the streets on Tuesday for a public demonstration. They say they are placing themselves under the protection of the African Union and the United Nations and ask that mechanisms be urgently set into motion to ensure the protection of citizens to take charge of the process of comprehensive and inclusive dialogue to build a consensual transition and to create the conditions that guarantee a lasting political handover. Meanwhile, the African Union called for an all-inclusive national dialogue and expressed grave concern over said the establishment of a military council. To update on Somalia's election deadlock, the African Union has said Somalia is not ready to hold countrywide election involving all its citizens. This was agreed upon on Thursday during the 93rd meeting of the 15-member AU Peace and Security Council. President Mohamed Abdullahi Fomajo and Parliament's two-year term extension was rejected by the Council, arguing that the only viable solution is the agreement signed in September 2020 to hold indirect elections this year. The African Union said a special envoy to the country has been appointed. The envoy will have just a month to drive mediation between parties in Somalia, who have failed to agree on an electoral calendar to prepare for indirect polls. Still in Somalia, gunfire erupted until evening in Somalia's capital on Sunday between units of the security forces for and against President Mohamed Abdullahi Mohamed's extended stay in power. Somalia's Homeland Security Minister Hassan Jamali expressed condolences to all victims but did not say how many people had been killed or wounded. The soldiers were believed to have entered the city from military bases outside Mogadishu. Most of them belonged to the clan of former President Hassan Sheikh Mohamed and Sharif Sheikh Ahmed. Both have vowed to forcefully dialogue the president if he does not return to negotiations over the election delay or resign. In a related development, former Somali President Hassan Sheikh Mohammed on Twitter accused President Mohammed Abdullahi Mohammed of orchestrating an attack by soldiers on his home on Sunday as splits depend over an extension of the incumbent's term in office. The accusation did not include details or proof. In the tweet, he noted that a warning has been sent to Formajo and reiterated the dangers of politicizing security. But the internal security minister, Hassan Hondube, denied that the government had raided the former president's home, according to the state-run Somali National News Agency. This is your Digital First Brand African News Network, TOS Television. You are watching Africa Now, more political and business stories after the break. Stay tuned. Welcome back. In Mali, the European Union's foreign policy chief, Joseph Borrell Fontelis, has pledged the European Union's support to Mali as it undergoes a transition to an elected government following last year's military coup. This was made known on Saturday in Bamako during talks held with Mali's top leaders. The transition, Fontelli said, should be historical. He further stated it will serve as a basis for the new Mali, with a process and a calendar that should be followed with elections, structural reforms and good governance. Young military officers who said President Ibrahim Boubacar K. 
Town, 18th of August, after months of protests driven by his failure to solve Mali's long-running jihadist conflict and perceived corruption. Presidential and legislative elections are due to take place in Mali in February 2022. United Nations and local officials said three UN peacekeepers have been seriously wounded in a rocket attack on a military base in northern Mali. Oliver Salgado, the spokesman for the UN peacekeeping mission in the West African country, MINUSMA, said Sunday's attack took place on a base in Tesalit, which houses Malian soldiers, UN peacekeepers and French troops. Three peacekeepers were gravely wounded in the attack, he added. More than 130 of the 13,000 strong MINUSMA personnel have been killed, including six this year. According to UN statistics, after a total of around 230 deaths since the mission began in 2013. Libya's new interim Prime Minister Abdul Hamid Bebe has postponed a visit to the east of the country that had been planned for Monday to demonstrate his unity, government's progress in ending years of division between warring factions, hours after an advanced security team was turned back from Benghazi airport. His spokesman Mohammed Hamouda said in a social media post made known the postponement without giving details. Libya has been mad in chaos since dictator Muammar Gaddafi was deposed and killed in a 2011 NATO-backed uprising. The country has also witnessed a continued friction between rival camps in the capital Tripoli in the west and Benghazi in the east. The stronghold of Commander Khalifa Haftar's Libyan National Army, that's the LNA. Bebe's visit to Benghazi on Monday was to have been the first by a Tripoli-based prime minister in years, a moment intended to encapsulate a rare opportunity to end its conflict. A study further evaluating the efficacy of the Johnson & Johnson's COVID-19 vaccine after its use was temporarily suspended in the United States due to extremely rare cases of blood clots will resume in South Africa on Wednesday. But on Friday, the United States gave a go-ahead on the restart of the vaccinations. This is some case study has been carried out by the National Department of Health, South African Medical Research Council, and Johnson & Johnson, among others. Health Minister Zuelim Kizi, in a statement released by the country, Health Ministry said it is much better to have the vaccine than to avoid taking it for fear of getting a blood clot. Also, the Health Ministry said authorities will ensure there is intensified pre-vaccination assessment and post-vaccination monitoring when this is some case study resumes. In business, in the financial year that will begin in July, Egypt expects its borrowing needs to rise by 7.1% to 1.068 trillion Egyptian pounds, according to a copy of the draft budget. Finance Minister Mohamed Mahit told Parliament on Sunday that the 2021-2022 expenditure will be 2.46 trillion pounds. The budget was based on economic growth forecast at 5.4%, up from an estimated 2.8% this year and inflation of 7%. The budget forecast an overall deficit equivalent to 6.8% of gross domestic product, down from 7.7% this year and a primary surplus of 5.1%. This is your Digital First Pan African News Network to your West Television. You're watching Africa Now. More business story coming your way after the break. Do stay tuned. Thank you for staying tuned. Uganda on Monday said it plans to approach its major creditors to negotiate a possible suspension of debt repayment after its debt load skyrocketed to 35% in a single year. The large credit lines from the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, and other lenders in 2020 were gobbled to meet funding pressures triggered by the economy crisis caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Uganda's total public debt surged to $18 billion as of December 2020, a 35% rise from a year earlier. External creditors hold two-thirds of the country's debt, Finance Ministry data shows. The country's economy, which contracted 1.1% last year, is forecast to expand at 3.1% in 2021, helped by robust agriculture sector production and recovery of industrial activity. 
And on the entertainment scene, a documentary, My Octopus Teacher, by South African filmmaker Craig Foster, has won the Oscar for Best Documentary at the 93rd Academy Awards in Los Angeles. The documentary was directed by Pipa L. Rich and James Reed. According to Craig Foster, My Octopus Teacher began as a personal video project 10 years ago to rekindle his connection with nature by observing an increasing while free diving near Cape Town. L. Leach on the telecast hopes the documentary provided a glimpse of a different kind of relationship between human beings and the natural world. The film has also earned the Directors Guild of America nomination, a BAFTA award, and was named Top Documentary at the Producers Guild of America Awards. And that is Africa now. For more updates, do visit our website at www.tostvnetwork.com. Do also follow and like our social media handles on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And remember to subscribe on YouTube. Do stay with us and enjoy more programs on TOS Television Network. My name is Adesua Osui. Thank you for watching.